Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here. With Barnett Bain. Good and moment. Good moment, everyone. <laughs> and look who else is here. We're we have here. We have uh, Jasmine Michaels and Sandy Stewart. It's the Wives Show. Another year. Wow, that blew by. Woo, that really feels like fast. we just did this. We were just here. We were. We well, were. Didn't I just see you? <laughs> <laughs> I just saw you, it feels yep. like. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's exactly. pretty tight here in the studio today, so we're both uh, sharing the same chair, it feels like. That's good. It's cold. It keeps us I warm. know. Well, you know, we have quite a few years have behind us, and so I think we're prepared. Mm-hmm. We're well prepared for sharing the same chair without getting too triggered or triggering each other. Some days. Some days. <laughs> on a good day. On a good day. We're completing each other's sentences. I was just going to say that. Yeah. On, on a, a good, good day. day. So 2015 is, is fast approaching. I wow. think this will probably air right around the time that uh, the new year is clicking. Mm-hmm. Over. Uh, so, what's the what's the plan this year? What's the big aspiration? Maybe uh, as a couple, what you want to create the That's space beautiful. for your. Well, the first thing that I want to suggest uh, for us and for all our listeners is to uh, take a moment to pause and to acknowledge the triumphs of the last of the last year mm. um, Freeman uh, the show's been a pleasure and a, and a triumph it just uh, supersedes itself so that's a, a big piece we're, for me we're and still on the air <laughs> we're still on the air that's a triumph <laughs> but there are so uh, many things there are so many things uh, to to take stock of and to celebrate and to remember to celebrate uh, and to recognize and to acknowledge uh, of the la- over the last year before going into the next year. So thank you so much for all that we've been through, the, all of the fun and all of the adventure and all of, as well as all of the challenges that I think we we handled um, as best as we as best as we could. We learned how to flow. Mm-hmm. Better than the year before. Yeah, see? More flow. Oh, so oh, it's only the first 34 years after that. <laughs> it's all downhill it from 34 there. Years We're all cruise from there. 30, you know, I've kind of lost knows. track. It's a lot. Of thir- it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. 30-something. It's got a three, three in front of it. It's a show, 30-something. Mm-hmm. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, actually it doesn't feel... Um, this year we handled... Uh, we met life in a different way. So um, my relationship with you feels quite new in a lot of respects. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a a renewing. Let's talk about renewing of vows. Though I think we just edited our uh, vision, our relationship vision that we created 2006, 2005, 2006. And we just tweaked it a little bit recently. And that felt good. Yeah. Yeah. What was the uh, nature of the tweaks? What... What uh, were you able to look at uh, from eight years ago, almost nine years ago, and what were you able to say, well, we've absolutely achieved that and we could broom that? Well, it wasn't a matter of brooming. It was a matter of adjusting. So one of the things that we've added is a bit more of where we honor what is something we enjoy that the other person doesn't have to enjoy. That was sort of missing in our statement. So we had this way where we organized our relationship about what we shared mutually, but we didn't include as sacred what we don't share, what right. mm. we individually pursue. So that was one adjustment. And the other was- Which was, um, which was big because both you and I have, the, there's we have a lot of common interests, but then we also have separate things that we really enjoy that just don't include the other person. But we we feel for us is very healthy as a couple. Yes. Yeah. And then love it was the response that we want to respond to whatever's showing up from the perspective of love it. Find a way to love it, whatever it is, you know. Um, and what was interesting about that, because you and I were talking about this, how confronting or carefronting, I think is the language I prefer, is a way of loving it, right? There's mm. things sometimes that And you said something powerful about this, Jazz. You said, I really trust you enough to call out those things that I'm uncomfortable with or that, you know, and and, and that's an expression of love. That, I think, is a kind of interesting piece of the puzzle, that if I let something go, if I kind of sweep it under the rug, as it were, Mm -hmm. that's not loving. 
Mm-hmm. That's not a loving thing to do, mm-hmm. right? And so that language specifically, care fronting, which is to lead with a positive intent, right? I care enough, you, I, you know, I care about you. I, I care about our relationship enough to say, this is what happened. This is how it feels to be me, and we got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this w- this year was. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This 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 year was huge for me, and what you just said that I was expressing to Freeman what what he was saying is that I really trust him, and I feel like we have a, a really amazing partnership because I can say to him, you know that made me angry or I'm upset with you and I know that I'm still going to be loved for mm-hmm. my for who I am and not something that he wants me to be or yeah there's an, there's an interesting thing about this like yes thank you and and what I like about the way you say it these days cuz that's actually something that's changed in our lives Jasmine will say something she'll note something that I did that's an aspect of my kind of um less than helpful self. (laughs) But she says it in a way where I can hear it. And there isn't this big thing about trying to fix me, Mm -hmm. right? There isn't this big thing of like going into a long story about it. It's just Mm -hmm. noting that, oh yeah, and I did do that. Because I don't want to identify with it. She doesn't want to identify with it. So it's interesting. It's, It's making note of it, but then it isn't as painful. There isn't the long drama around it that there was in the past, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I want to throw some, raise something and then throw it out to, to the three of you, to all of us. So um, there's something that I'm very aware of in this conversation that has to do with the intricacies of, of developing and maturing a relationship between, a relationship mm-hmm. in the between, the between the couple, between the the lovers between the spouses and we've been in love both of us uh, as couples all of us as uh, uh, all of us as couples both couples here have had very very long-standing marriages and what I'm hearing is well you've achieved a certain comfort in um, the relationship between and are now exploring a balance between having a comfort with uh, the relate from care for the other to self-care mm. a relationship with it. how do i blend in the self-care inside of inside of the marriage and i know that you and i have discussed that a lot particularly over the last few years where is there room inside of a, a marriage that is that is refined in the exploration of the between where is there room in there to stir in self-care how do you take care of yourself in a way that um, still honors the, the the marriage, that honors the bigger relationship. I, I know that in the past, far distant past, um, in order for me to take care of myself, I had to get angry first. Mm. You know, I'd have to be mad at you because you let me down or did something in some way, and then I had the right to advocate for myself and do what I wanted. Mm. And I no longer have to get angry to take care of myself. I can just take care of myself out of self-love. Do you think and that's a widespread uh, symptom that people oh, absolutely. Uh, have to find justified anger in order to, to if, advocate if, for if themselves? If the agreement is you're required to take care of me, yeah. I mean, this is a little piece, and look, I don't Sometimes getting gender specific isn't helpful, but I will say it this way. I think it's typical for men to kind of dump onto the women in their lives to take care of them in a particular way. Um, I know it's true for me. You know, I'm going to point. I think it's true for you. <laughs> <laughs> Last night at the kitchen sink. At the kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think, you know, sometimes getting mad and saying, okay, I'm going to take care of myself right now um, because you know, we guys can be a little needy. And I'm not sure that's not required. At least, you know, obviously there's a level of maturity, what you're talking about, in the relationship where I don't need to get mad at you to say, here's what I'm going to do, here's what I'm not going to do, or whatever it is, and you'll be a big boy about it, or whatever, right? Yeah, and especially for women on the other side, for my generation, probably a little less for Jasmine, but I think that it gets passed down in the genes. Mm. Love was taking care of somebody else. Right. Love was doing everything. You know, in the in the olden days, the men went out to work, and the women's job was to take care of everybody, so that, or him, so that they could bring back the 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 money, right. basically. And it's so different now, right. but women still hold it in their psyche. 
I think this generation different. I see it different in our daughter and her friends. But yeah, the belief that I that's my I'm not a good wife if I don't do that. I'm not a good partner, but actually it just creates a resentful angry partner. Right. When you're that's not taking care of yourself. Yeah. Well, especially when look, if if we go back a hundred years and your role is the home and the nest and whatever, that's fine. I mean, maybe it's fine, maybe it's not fine, I don't know, yeah, but, but I'm just saying it's different clear than jobs. if you're yeah. putting in your 40 hours a right. week at the office and then, what, am I also supposed to do this? But this that thing doesn't is, work. That is all absolutely true. And I think if we kind of float up on mm-hmm. another thousand feet, there's even a bigger kind of global um, buy-in on this we all seem to make um, the lives of others our business. Yeah. Mm. And f- for example, so that happens in the way that you're describing it, this sort of need the, to um, the way women are raised and the way men are raised to be uh, mothered by their women, whether it's their mothers yes. or their wives. I mean, this is just the way it is. It, yes. has been, it is until it's broken. Right. And it's difficult to break out of that. But we still are trained to make others' lives our business. So I notice a bunch of Christmas cards and they all have <laughs> they all have something very similar so there's a buddy of mine who has been sending cards to me for every every year and um, in he has all of his sons in this cards, and and uh, it always says uh, so this one is like captain of the football team and this one went off to Stanford and this one is off like um, you know it's like a four-star general in the military and then <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And one after the other and then, you know, le- we were talking about another card and, that and we got. And not a word about him or his wife. Not a word or him wife, or his other wife. Other than Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and failure to mention, and this one actually got pulled over for drunk driving yeah. last well, week. That, you know? yeah. that just, it's only like. But uh, we also got another one from a, another friend in a similar, similar sort of situation with their, with their kids. And we see, um, clearly, it, you start to see a pattern of people are identified they're taking on the achievements of their children and of other people as ways to enhance their own sense of their own value and their own, their own sense of self, their own... Um, I'm say, okay if I'm they're o- so great. Exactly. And, and look what I did with my loving. And this is the proof of my loving. But if you pull that off the table, if you pull that out of the equation, yeah. it's terrifying um, because eventually people... Either the, it, people have the opportunity come to come to the awareness that, well, who am I really absent what I am doing for other people and, uh, or absent, as you said, if my kid is not the captain of the football team at Stanford. Then uh, I'm a loser. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, what if he is if he's actually some kind of, you know, he, he got pulled over for a DUI. What does that do to my own sense of my own value? What does that mean? Who are we really when we are not? Uh, making the lives of others our business mm. for whatever reason, then who, who are we? And in the, in the context of a rela- long-standing committed relationships, who are we really when we say, well, I am in the relationship and I also am going to be self-caring? How much individuality can I have in there that has nothing to do with who you are or what you are? And I promise I will, as an aside, wash the dishes without being asked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that what you're saying, Barnett, um, what I've really gotten this year is um, I've been really exploring the idea of self-abandonment mm. and how when I'm real when I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not home. I've mm. abandoned myself. I'm out there in your life, doing and hoping that you're going to achieve or succeed or do something that's going to make me feel good about me. But Mm -hmm. I'm not actually present in my life. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not here. And if I'm not here, I can't really love you from the inside out. I can only love you from the outside in, and then I have an expectation of what you need to be in order to have the love, so it's very conditional. Whereas when I'm taking care of myself with self-compassion and self-love and asking for what I want and feeling good, about you know we always said it you got to love yourself first but I never really understood it this is a whole different exploration of loving yourself Mm. first before you really can you have to be in touch with your own love for that other person to activate it it doesn't come from the other person it comes from yourself I think that's why we added that piece about we're off doing our own thing too yeah absolutely absolutely how does it look 
Which, I, when you're off doing your own thing in the in the new formulation, mm. what's an example of it? Well, you know, it's interesting because one of the things that you um, touched on, I, I was thinking about the month of December. The month of December, for me, is always so overwhelming. Right. And every single year, without a doubt, I, or without, you know, fail, I usually get really sick right towards the end, right around Christmas. Oh. And there have been a couple of Christmases where literally I almost said, I can't do Christmas this year. So the beginning of this month, I said, Freeman, we're going to write down everything we need to do. I'm not going to overbook. I'm going to say no if I have to. Right. You know, I don't want to be the yes person and then, you know, have laryngitis and pneumonia, you know, at the last week of the year again. And so this month, I purposely didn't overindulge with food, but I didn't go, you know, but I didn't deprive myself. I purposely took care of myself by not going to the gym. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but I said to myself, I'm not going to run myself ragged. Right. So just being really conscious of what I need to get through this month because it's physically taxing. It's emotionally, you know, it's been tough this year, the well, end of this and year. And ultimately it's no fun. I mean, yeah. the, the, the pressure to do all these things, again, sort of the expectation that gets layered in about who do we need to be for everyone so that then we show up as lovable, that yeah. then we show up as a perfect family, you know? We're not raised that way. Um, it shows up in things like the Prince Charming syndrome. I'll find some right. guy who will make me complete. Right. It shows up for men in the tall, silent, the strong, silent type caretaker syndrome. Uh, where you have to constantly be uh, over caring for others. It's my responsibility to care for everybody. Yeah, I'll and, fix everything. I'll f I'm the fixer. I can't handle uh, the dissonance of anything uncomfortable, uh, so I have to fix it. Uh, we're raised in this thing as opposed to being raised in a culture where we learn young that I'm loved not for what I do but for who I am. Mm -hmm. That's so foreign. Mm -hmm. It is foreign. Mm -hmm. But what else is not? What else is foreign is that we're overdue for a break. Right? Yeah. So let's take a commercial. When we get back, we will talk more about relationships, about how we take care of ourselves, and so forth. Uh, after these commercial messages, so stay with us because we'll be right back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. So before the break, uh, Jasmine, you were talking about uh, self-care, and uh, I know that we interrupted you, so I want to hear the end of that piece. Well, just that that was me physically taking care of myself and, you know, around December, but uh, Part of what I think was going on for me last year and what has been eased up the end of this year is that uh, oftentimes I, I do this crazy thing where uh, am I doing enough? Right, right around the end of the year, I have like this very lots of pressure on myself. Like, what have I accomplished this year, and mm. what have I not accomplished? And and so uh, the idea that I need to be a perfect wife and a perfect mom and a, a perfect you know uh, friend and it's just I've just really at the end of this year decided. I'm taking care of myself and I'm not going to be that ambitious. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's like I'm not going to go looking for the next thing that's going to make me fabulous, you know. Um, so just taking the pressure off. I love have it. you noticed that? Have you noticed that I've been like kind of like this month less fabulous? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, more fabulous. <laughs> more the, fabulous. The, the 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 whole theme of who you're being and how clear you are about who you're being and why you're being that way is, I think, the maturation. Mm. Because, look, early on in our relationship, who I needed you to be, right, and who you needed me to be, and who you felt like you needed to be for me, all of that kind of enmeshment, all of that kind of, um, it, it, it's interesting because we get married and you know the the there is this kind of drag on the relationship about not changing not really growing because if you grow or change then that might be a threat mm -hmm. right you know what i'm saying talking about this mm -hmm. whole the codependent like mm -hmm. we'll get married and this is we'll set up our lives and then for 50 years we'll live that way and then no one has to freak out you know we've talked about this in terms of uncertainty and how we relate to uncertainty right <clears throat> in our relationship so i feel like what we've done is we've built in a bigger sort of space or container. Our relationship is big enough now to sort of hold that we have individual wants and needs. And then our communication is uh, good enough, 
because sometimes it falls apart. But even in that, we kind of pick it up in a way. We've been through it enough Mm -hmm. that there's more space. Mm -hmm. What do you think of not only the uncertainty that as we season and mature in our relationships, we discover there is more and more uncertainty in the relationships, but what do you think of um, beyond that, developing an ease with the uncertainty uh, in the world? Well, I think it's the same. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same. The world, I- the world is us. And um, a- when you were talking, um, Jasmine, what really came up for me was not that you're less fabulous, but that you have self-love and self-compassion, mm. that you're being very compassionate with yourself. And that feels very soft and sweet and loving. And from that place, you can be soft and sweet and loving with your loved ones, but you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Right. You don't have to perform. Right. You just, it's, an, it's a resonance. And as we're self-compassionate with the uncertainty in the world, I think that's one way that I handle it. I handle my own fears with, I've been trying to handle my, no, I'm not trying. I'm committed to I handling have, my own Yeah, fears. I'm more with conscious more of having, uh, handling my fears <laughs> with self-compassion. And when I have self-compassion, I can have self-compassion for you. You're, num- you know, once removed is you. So that before when I would get angry about certain behavior, I now can, I, I understand why you do that. I know the wounding. I know where it came from. I know you're doing your best. I know that it's painful for you as well. And then you go out and take that to the world yes. and handle the world that way. I love that. That is exactly what I was trying to say with Jasmine in terms of when my little behaviors that no one likes come up, that, that we just note it and go on. Yeah. Versus before, we would have these crises and these crumbling, and I can't believe you do that, and why do you do that? And there'd be this whole analysis blame, and then the layer that I did. Shame and and resentment. The yeah. And it would go on for hours, days Damn. even, about how, how are you going to fix this? Because I really can't live yeah. with it anymore. You know, versus now, it's a minute. We note it. Yeah, I did do that. Um, I did something with your dad. We won't go into it the other day. And you were like, Freeman, why did you do that? I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, I don't know either, but it wasn't great. I'm like, I didn't feel great. <laughs> we're right on. Yeah, that perfect. was it. Wonderful. Overdone. Wonderful. It was so, just me being needy or whatever wonderful. the heck I was being. Yeah. And you're, it's you being human. Yeah. That's it. It's you being human. And I do things like that. Right. Not yeah. proud of it, but I, I recognize I, I, it. But doing. sometimes I hate being so human. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and conscious. And human and conscious. conscious. No, horrible. No, it's, it's, it was better just to deny it. No, but it's it's let's go into the default and saying something. How many times do we say something stupid and we go, why did I say that? You know, or like, and then you beat yourself up about it and over and over again. I'm like, now it's just like, okay, look, I'm human. I say <laughs> stupid things sometimes. Right. And yeah. I hope that people know that I really don't mean, you know, I, I, I mean well. I'm, a, you know, right. but. That self care that you're talking about now and that you've been talking about in other ways and you've been talking about as well, you and I, not so much. <laughs> 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 but that self care, that is a. Uh, a, it's a compassion for sure, but there's a strength there. It's so, Definitely. It's so strong Solid. that it allows uh, people to feel more confident in their uh, relationship, in, in relationship with someone with who, is, you. who does yes. self-care. M- yes. It, We've said before about both of our wives is they're solid. Yeah. They're solid enough to say what they like and don't like. You, know, you don't have to guess. You know? and, and they're that's solid really enough to be. They don't, whether they're saying, saying is is one level of it, but uh, solid enough to be, in your own words, more or less fabulous, but just to be what is comfortable for you and not have to uh, do out of some sort of performance anxiety. Just to be, it creates a field um, of, a so- uh, there's a solidity there that allows, that translates to others' experience of you as being dependable, reliable, you, you, could, you know who this person is, and there's, there's a steadfastness to it. There's like a, there's a rock solidness to I it. I think another word for what you're saying is authenticity. Yes. When you're Thank you. in your authenticity, when someone is in the, authentically in their authenticity, they have to be home. They have to be connected to themselves and their feelings and their thoughts and, and their actions. And, th- and that, that's dependable. If somebody's really there, you know, you know those people that are always splitting off and they're not there when you're talking to them and you feel they're somewhere else or there's there's nothing to hold on to yeah. but 
when you are in your authenticity, the light and the shadow, at least there's actually matter to hold on to. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, so so uh, I used to have an intention I worked with for a very long time. I fully inhabit my body and honor it with my practices and my choices, right? And I would repeat that all the time is that's how I want to show up in the world. That's how I want to relate to my body. What's interesting is over the last couple of years, I've just changed it. I'm at home in my body. Mm-hmm. And it's what you're talking about. Um, just that I'm acknowledging my body, that I'm aware of my body, and that I'm making conscious choices. And then you could extend that out to say I'm at home in my relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm at home in my ability to honor myself, take care of myself, make choices, right? Mm-hmm. Versus the out of home, out of my body, running around trying to fix, running around trying to prove. Mm-hmm. Not to say I don't do that, I do, but the reminder is to come back, ground again. Mm-hmm. Do I have something I can ground in, mm-hmm. you know? In fact, some of the language for that statement is it's a grounding statement. Mm-hmm. I'm at home in my body. Mm-hmm. And then Definitely. I have to remind myself, because I'm not all the time, right? That's the gig, is I'm reminding myself, get in, you know, breathe, get mm-hmm. centered, ground, grab, grab your belly, where are you, mm-hmm. you know? And a marriage is a body. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, uh, ultimately, we know ourselves, we come to know ourselves on this journey of becoming um, relational with our bodies and knowing ourselves not just as a head trip but not, my body's not just something that carries my head around still working with that one but that i know myself i know the vitality of the aliveness in my own body and then i begin to understand that my relationship is also an experience of my body can i be with what's going on with us what's going on with you and then my friends my community, my world. This is a very old idea in many religions, and certainly in the Christian religion. Um, um, the, the flesh, my body, is the whole planet. The body of Christ is the whole one, planet. One body, it's, one spirit. It's, there's one thing going on yes. here. But, mm-hmm. And as we explore the boundaries of our own consciousness, more and more we begin to identify with the, the marriage, the community, the world as our body. And this is, I think, why marriage is such a, such a powerful um, backdrop. Hermitage, you <laughs> yeah. know, it's like going off into, it's like going into a monastery. Marriage is, is such a backdrop for, an exp- for a spiritual exploration. Mm-hmm. It is, and it's such a powerful thing in a world that's changing, in a world that's, that's fluctuating um, because my perspective is the ability to see other, to partner, right? Because we're partners in this. And, and that our partnership is a sacred partnership that supports both of us, but that it then creates a stability for us, but also in the world. You know, so it's interesting because the people I'm choosing to work with, you, Barnett, I'm working with our friend Susan Leahy, whose husband's also really solid, is I'm finding the people I really want to work with are people who are in solid relationships because – they can hold my needs in their consciousness. That's a maturity. You know, again, when I first met Jasmine, I've said this many times, I couldn't see her. It was what I needed her to be, so I felt okay about myself. It actually wasn't until sort of years into our relationship that I felt like, oh my God, I see you. It was like a moment where I was like, I see you. I'm not just seeing you from this frame of reference of who do I need you to be so I feel safe and successful and good about myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it was after we had one kid, by the way. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. I know the moment. Mm -hmm. It's a magical moment. Yeah. But it started off, actually, in a kind of shadow expression. Because the first – so I'll tell a little bit of the story because I think it's helpful. Um, We were in a – Uh, the first year of the master's degree in spiritual psychology that I got from University of Santa Monica. We actually went into the program together. Um, Jasmine got pregnant with Isabella and and, and couldn't finish. Um, But what happened in in, uh, probably about our third weekend is we had done these trios, very powerful process, and my heart was wide open, and I was seeing people in a very deep and profound way. And whatever story they were telling about their lives, I held it in this really generous context, right? So there was people getting up and sharing, and probably two people two women had got up, all women in this particular sharing, uh, got up before you. And I was open to them and I was like hearing their story. And then Jasmine's hand went up and immediately I got nervous. Like, oh gosh, what's she going to say? How is this going to be a reflection of me? But in the context of that class, I caught it and was like, wow, I don't want to be that with my, my, with, with my wife. And she got up and shared and I heard her. And we went to lunch afterwards and I said, 
I just want you to know I love you with all of those. And she was talking about our challenges. And that was a major shift in our relationship. Yeah. I think our relationship is changes year to year. Like every year there's something about it that changes in a positive way. I mean, this last year was challenging. And, you know, again, it's like we look at, again, we go back to what do we want out of our relationship? Are we living the life we want to live? We talk about, you know, our practices. But not in a fantasy way. No. In a very deep, substantial way. Given no. the raw materials of what is versus having to make up a story so that then we're following a fantasy. This is a very like solid, given the raw materials of where we are, we can still, from a loving perspective, you know, it's more than enough to work with, frankly. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And just going back to what it is that, that is gonna make us happy and successful as a couple. You know, we always, we're, we, we were talking about this the other day where we're chasing, you know, the carrot of like, I will be happy when we have this. Mm. I will be happy when we're doing this. I will be happy. And it's like anybody who you know that is a young couple, it's like, I'll be, you know, or a young, or as a young person, I will be happy when I graduate from college. I will be happy when I find Mr. Prince Charming. I will be happy when I have children. And again and again, you, you keep, it's, it's like a moving target, you know, mm -hmm. you, you get to a certain age where you realize, no, you won't. Like, be happy in this moment with yourself, by yourself, with your partner, hopefully, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. It reminds me, uh, we were driving back from San Francisco a few weeks ago, so we had a long drive, and it was in the rain, so the atmosphere was perfect. Uh -huh. I love it. I love it. At the stage, you know, it was it. rainy Not and gray. Not what you choose as a yeah. drive back. Um, and we were kind of both tired, and it was, a, you know, it took double the time so we were it was a slow drive and we we're kind of heavy and in this space and examining the things that don't work in our lives and like what our fears are and mm -hmm. we're making some big changes in our lives right now so we were sort of on the underbelly of it rather than mm -hmm. the excitement of it mm -hmm. that's part of it and then i don't know what happened maybe you remember the moment but i just Turn to Barnett because we were examining the underbelly of all these challenges. But in the midst of these challenges, I kind of got it. And I looked at him and I went, Oh my God, our life is amazing. It is. Do you know how successful we are as human beings, mm. as people? Yeah. Do you? And then I just looked at him and I went, You are so successful and and I'm not talking about achievements right. you know I'm talking about essence here it's, it's a different measure it's a completely different but I, I, like the 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 rain and the fog lifted and this feeling just came over me of oh my god my husband the success and I literally looked at him with different eyes than I was looking at mm -hmm. him 5 minutes prior and then he did the same to me. My God, you're so successful. You're in touch with this, and you have this awareness. And we just drove the rest of the way home smiling. Mm, and for a, for a few days, it, like as a joke, but it was true, when I'd call him or I'd want something, I'd go, my successful husband, where are you? And he'd go, my <laughs> successful wife, come here, you know, instead of calling each it. other by name. And it's just the... The, the, how you frame it, totally. how exactly, because nothing changed other than how I was willing to frame it. And if I didn't have these challenges, I would be a potato. I wouldn't be a successful human being. Or, or, I would or be, you'd be a cookie cutter of some, you know, propped up version of yourself that someone else, you know, you're living someone else's exactly. life. Exactly. Right? My parents' life, yeah. which is fine for them. Or societies or whoever's. Or you know? I'd be having a resting life. This incarnation would just be one, you know, some people just, there's some incarnations where you just don't do much. You just rest. <laughs> right. You know, this would, this isn't a resting one. You know, we, we <laughs> no, came no, to no. do something. <laughs> right. And we put up our hand and, and, and we, right. we, we volunteered. I'm here to help the world change. I'm, I'm going to make the map. Yeah. We didn't volunteer to rest this time. So, okay, this is what it is. You know, go for it. But that reframing was such a wonderful Mm. Uh, I love the image of the lifting fog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love that. So I, I'm so glad that you reminded me of that. Of how successful you well, are? No, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> especially that. Could you do that again for me? It was only a couple of... A little higher. Oh, perfect. It was only a couple of weeks ago. And um, as you're right, for, the, for about four or five days, it was so alive in us. Yeah. And uh, over the last week, I haven't 
remembered it with the same kind of connection uh, yeah, to the energy. Too. And so I'm going to um, write it down and make it a uh, part of, of um, an energy that I am committed to tapping into more and more in the coming year. And so that when we do the wives show, a year from now, mm. we can uh, see just the, the, what, how much of that gap did we uh, collapse, uh, and how how deeply are we living into that sense of of being successful, uh, unrelated to what we do, unrelated yes. to what That's we a, achieve? That's a super big distinction. Yeah. It's, the, it's the gratitude. It's yeah. just being very, just very, very grateful. It's humility. Yeah. Self-awareness yeah. and humility are synonymous. Hey, I need to take a little break, or we need to take a little break. <laughs> when we come back, we'll talk more about uh, this and all the things that we think to talk about. Beautiful. Stay with us here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And we're back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness, Freeman Michaels, Barnett Bain, Sandy Stewart, Jasmine Michaels. It is the Wives Show, round, I think this is our fourth. Is it fourth, our round fourth? Four? Fourth year. Yeah. So year. we're back. So I love that you were just saying the noting of this moment and reflecting on it um, and then bringing it back a year from now and saying, you know, this is what we noticed and where we're orienting towards and how do we do? One of the challenges, and um, not every challenge is a, has to be a struggle, but one of the challenges, one of the opportunities for me uh, is to um, make notice of these moments, these shining moments, these transcendent moments, uh, these peak moments. There's lots of languages for these things. To make notice of them and to remember them mm. and to commit to fostering uh, an intimacy with them, to go back to them and to savor the quality of the energy of them so that it becomes more and more familiar. Um, prior to this moment, uh, I have had m many uh, such peak moments, and I remember them for a very short period of time, and then they they disappear. So I haven't um, I haven't developed a practice. You know, I, I, I haven't practiced it the way I used to strum my guitar and practice as a as a boy. I haven't practiced it the way um, we commit to doing the show on a weekly basis. I have not practiced developing a relationship and cultivating that energy in in me by referring to it and contemplating it and feeling it in my body. I haven't even committed to some um, device writing it down or whatever so that I could even remember that it existed and that will change. We'll see how we're doing a year from now. Well, because, you know, it's uh, our brain is such a habitual organ and we have to really you know, create these new neural pathways. And I think, Jasmine, you said something, gratitude. I think gratitude is one of the best ways to create new neural pathways. Because no matter what's going on, there's always something to be grateful for. And there, if, if it's only just being alive and having this challenge, right. you know, well, you that, can be right. alive the, the for that. The language that Barnett used, he said, challenge, wait, opportunity. Yeah. You know, that's a different equation than challenge equals problem. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a little uh, malination shift here. We're just organizing it differently. Mm -hmm. And also, um, a word that um, this phrase is not my own. I got it from a dear friend, but it has rocked my world. And that is knowing without certainty. Because if I look back over my life, and I'm sure everybody can do this, we've been in situations where we've called it a challenge, but in actuality, when we look back, everything was in place to lead us through something, and we came out on the other side with something better beyond our imagination. Absolutely. Totally. Something we could not have even imagined. Absolutely. And so that's that knowing without certainty, to know that even when you're in the muck, 
everything is going to fit together to lead you to where your soul wants you to arrive. Right. And that's a very powerful um, that's a very remembering it's a very for me. It's, it's faith. It's, I mean, it's have, faith. It's having yeah, the faith that's another that way to say we it, are yeah. not the directors of our life. Or, or we are. Or we it's are. Combo. Who knows? It's combo, combo act. Combo act. But it, yeah. the, the, it's just the simple term of like, it's going to be okay. Yeah. Well, it's and that there's something okay. that wants to be born through me. And that it, it will find form, yeah. you know? The, the, the challenge with goal setting, because as you guys know, I do a, a bit of coaching um, and uh, now more corporate coaching. It, it, goals are great, we need them. The problem with a goal is it, it, it's an inherent limitation because it's really the best we can see from where we're currently standing, right? Because there's something beyond our present perception just mm-hmm. hasn't happened yet. So I always say when people, I don't mind if you have a goal, that, and you need them. The challenge is to find what's underneath the goal. What's the why behind the what, behind what you're naming? You know, what's the quality of experience that you associate with that? Because honestly, if you can know the quality and organize towards the goal, by all means, but you might find yourself blowing right past it or mm-hmm. doing something different and going, mm-hmm. well, this is a better expression of what I really, really want than the thing I thought I wanted when I you know, imagined it from where I was standing at that point. Because the energy lands someplace. It's you just someplace. have to be willing to have it land in, but it's the quality yeah. that matters, right? And you always say, Barnett, it's the function, the not function, the form. Yeah. The form, it'll find form. If I understand what's underneath this, then, you know, it's the adventure of the marriage. It's it's like we know what we're committed to creating in terms of a quality of experience. You know, that's the nature of our vision. Uh, you know, we play and have fun together. We relate openly and honestly without fear of saying the wrong thing. You know, these are the things that we're really working towards creating. That's the energy. How that looks, what form it takes, I don't know. Mm-hmm. We had, um, in all things, in our personal lives, and, and this goes for, for everyone, for our, all our listeners, too, we have ideas about our personal lives, most of which are hand-me-down. Truly. Almost mm. all of which we, um, if we really slow down and examine it, are products of how we've been socialized. It's stuff that we've learned from watching parents, watching role models. Watching, watching television. Watching television, listening to songs. I mean, it, it, most of it is how we are socialized. So uh, we have these very um, fixed ideas of what life looks like, what relationships look like, what marriages look like. And to the degree that we uh, have goals, they are usually inside of those structures. Definitely. And, and um, we can't be, as humans, we can't be without any sense of image because then we would just be psychotics. Uh, so we have a certain set of images, but to have uh, goals for a marriage that uh, our marriage is going to, to grow and be an adventure, but not too adventurous because we don't want to get freaked <laughs> out. I mean, all of this, all of this, yes, but, 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 and all of these, to hold an energy <laughs> of intimacy and growth, the quality of the, the, the states of being. That's it. And uh, to, to have that and be gra- grateful, to have that gratitude, it's incompatible with control. You can't mm-hmm. be grateful and you can't um, set your star to uh, um, a quality of being, a feeling and be in control at the same time. That's right. So there is a certain surrender to that mm. uh, that I think collapses into what you were saying before, Jasmine, about having faith. You have faith in the relationship. You have faith in the quality of these states. I'm going to be happy for no reason. And uh, you surrender to that. And then what begins to become more and more apparent is there is this crazy, wild, beautiful dream. Uh, life is not a logical, linear process, and it has nothing to do, it starts to blow, down, blow out the walls of all of the ways, all of the hand-me-down thoughts, and all of, that is confrontive. The hand-me-down thoughts, this is a short, funny story. Um, my parents are visiting for the winter in Palm Springs, and we just uh, spend a few days with them. And, um, I came home and I was talking to our 26 year old daughter on the phone and she was talking about getting a new apartment and I was asking her some questions and she stopped for a minute and she said, mom, these questions are all about you. They have nothing Mm. to do with me. Mm. And I said, of course they're all about me. 
all I care about is you being safe. Like my questions were, what floor is it on? Do right, the windows right, right, lock? Right, right. You yeah, know, bars are the talk, windows. She's talking about hardwood floors and fire, you know, <laughs> of, uh, of tile in the bathroom. And I said, of course they're all about me. All I care about is your safety. I understand you have different concerns. I just spent a few days with my parents. I understand that your concerns have n- are are that my concerns have nothing at all to do about you. Just like I just experienced my parents' concerns and it was like a foreign language. They have nothing to do about me. So what? why would my concerns have anything to do about you? <laughs> of course, they're only mine, but could you please answer them? Exactly. You know? And sometimes you have to do that in a marriage too. Sure. This is all about me. Yeah. This is my conditioning. This is where I came from. But I need you to address it because it's part of what I'm dealing with. You know? well, I'm and asking you to address it out of your life. Love. Out of love out and of, caring out of love, but and compassion. Not out, of, not out of some sort of fixing, co- fixing or, or codependent. Of, yeah. So I understand that these things are about you and they're not about me. And because I love you and I want you to feel a little more comfortable, I will tell you that the apartment is on the first floor. I'm sorry, you'll have to deal with that. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. She didn't get the apartment. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and it was on the first exactly. floor. So and I acted very stuff. disappointed. Uh, <laughs> if you're listening, so we're really disappointed for you. Not. But um, We just went through that. That it's is such hysterical. A, we, we it's a high same, wire act. We did the same exact thing. Josh, literally. Literally. Josh got Joshua got an apartment. <laughs> I was asking Freeman if he got the right price. Yeah. What city is it in? Is it say right. uh, what floor are they right. on exactly the same yeah. exactly well you asked Freeman at least you were smarter well, right? yeah, <laughs> right. but, yeah, yeah because you want him to ask it because, you, because you go I, make the exactly. trouble because my son never answers his phone he's he's oh. he's, he's a boy so, so he's not gonna just, answer his phone so I, I was yeah. deflecting to him yeah. but Isn't no I, funny? yeah this this year Joshua moved out which was a huge a big deal. thing for you. Yeah. Well, I anticipated him moving out. We had talked about it earlier on in the, you know, probably mm, was it what was it? September, Jul- October. September, October. No, they moved out in November. And then the depression started. So yeah. I've had a, a oh. rough little end of the year, and uh, with we, with his moving, with his moving out. Effect? It's it's so funny well, because we miss him. I mean, all we, honestly, we, we were do. used to having him in the house. We love him. You but know? I think the anticipating of him moving out was bigger for me than I had had anticipated mm. and so his room sits there not painted yet I, yeah. I, I the door is still closed i haven't dealt with it yet so that's the kind of just allowing the end of the year kind of mm. finishing out trying to be as graceful as possible this has been a you know it's it's tough i mean i have two at home which are you know i'm, I'm just so grateful and the you know the christmas program last night was so sweet um and a reminder that it's a cycle you know but you know i'm I'm not as important to Joshua in his life right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's my interpretation, you know. That's so, right. I mean, that's yeah. your experience, and I think it's real. It you is know? real. Yeah. And, and it and should when, be. It should and be. It yeah. should be. And I know Thank that. Goodness. And yeah. I know yeah. that. And, We're not and when sorrow. I was, I mean, when I was, when I was asking Freeman about the apartment, he said to me, uh, "Jasmine, this is his life. Yeah. Right." You know, leave it alone. I mean, it, it, yeah, you know, wherever he lives or where to... he decides. So it's a tough one, though. It's There's tough. this wonderful phrase from Blake. The older that I get, the more um, the more meaning that it has, and the more areas that it it applies as the truth. The cut worm forgives the plow. Mm. The cut worm forgives, forgives the, plow. the plow. It's just the plow doing what the plow does. does. It yeah. does what the plow does, and suddenly there are two yeah. worms. Yeah. Yeah. So I um, this was wonderful. Mm. And it blew by. Is it over the year already? blew by. <laughs> it's over. But the we'll show go, blew we'll by. The year blew car. by. We could pretend we're more fabulous and keep going and do next Let's year's now, right? right? Yeah. We could start. We could start Change banking. Shirts, right? We'll bank for 2015 right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could record next year's show right now as long it's as we as long as we we wire our. We brain actually have to be out of the studio because there's going to be somebody standing there, we'll put nose pressed next to the show. glass okay. any second. But it was wonderful, uh, Freeman. It's wonderful to come to the. The end of a whole nother year with you. Thank you. Looking yeah. forward to the next year. And oh, Sandy, you're going to be back emotional. next year a bit more. I know, yes. I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. very yeah. excited Freeman about is, that. Freeman is uh, way more next year than he has been in the past, and so we'll have uh, Sandy sitting in. And when you're away, and then I will I'll be away also, yeah. and um, and Sandy will be sitting in with Freeman. So uh, expect to see uh, more of Sandy, and we'll expect to see 
more of Jasmine as well whenever we can. Thank you, wives, for being first wives and friends and, um, and doing the show again. And thank you both for being such good men. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So grateful. Yeah. And thank you, audience, for tuning in uh, week in, week out. We are here because you keep coming back. And some, well, we're compelled to keep going. So that's it. So thanks all. Uh, happy, happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Bye.